Welcome back to the studio, Warriors. My Warriors in Training boot camp begins today. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Are you ready? I can't hear you. No, like, really, I can't hear you. That's not the way this works. I hope you weren't yelling at the TV and someone in the other room was like, What's going on? All right, guys, what is going on? I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you've got your pad. I hope you went out and you got your pad and you're ready. You're ready for this airbrush journal for this 20 hours that I have uh, I've challenged you. Are you accepting my challenge? Of course you are. You're not going to back down in the face of me. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. So... If you remember episode two, we started spraying some paint. Well, we're going to get right back where we left off. Uh, there were some comments and some questions on the video, so we're going to mix a little bit of paint, thin it out. I'm going to stay away from the inks today, and we're just going to go with the AutoWare, the Createx. It's virtually the same acrylic paint across the board, different variations of tones, but the paint itself is virtually the same. And if you caught my hack video, number two, then you will know uh, there is a way to do this cheaply, thinning out these paints, keeping these brushes clean. Um, if you haven't, definitely check it out, guys. <sighs> knowledge. Who doesn't, who doesn't love new knowledge? All right, guys. I'm going to flip you around. We're going to get right into it. I know you're eager to learn and I'm eager to teach, so let's get on with it. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. I hope you got a couple pages that look like this already. I hope you haven't been wasting your time. All right, tools of the trade for today. We've got our paint reducer. We've got our opaque, semi-opaque paint. And we've got a pen, a ruler, and a straight edge of some sort because we are going to be doing some stenciling um so i recommend just a little business card um it's a little bit of a thicker paper stock and it's easy to hold on to and uh we're going to move on to mixing some paint so today i'm going to thin out some of this paint for you so you guys can kind of see how it sprays straight out of the bottle and once I reduce it, how it sprays, well, a little bit better. <laughs> All right, guys, check it out. All right, guys, now I always like to keep a little bit of cleaner in the base of my airbrush, just so that any paint that may have been uh, left over in the reservoir that may, have, may not have gotten cleaned out the last time I used it, it's not going to dry in there and cause any more issues. So you can just blast the rest of that out of there. I'll even clean it out my paper towel just get my finger right in there um, some of the smaller cups that you can't get your finger I like just to roll the paper towel into a little nub get that in there as much as you can reamer out all right guys so this is gonna be blue straight from the bottle let me set this up a little better All right, let's bring that a little closer. All right, guys, so I'm going to call this my uh, test sheet. And I'm just going to spray and see how the paint's flowing out of my brush. All right, I'm about an inch away. I'm hardly pulling back on the trigger, guys. Ooh. And this is a common thing that will happen if you have some paint on your tip and you just give it some air before cleaning it off. You get little splatters like that. And this is why when using an airbrush, you always start with air, keep your trigger down, and slowly apply the paint. Start with air, and slowly apply the paint. Remember, constant air, slowly apply the paint. Should I say it again? Nah, you got me. So that's spraying quite nice, straight out of the cup. Where did that little stencil go? See how our blends are? We should go the other way. Let's go the other way. It's 
Still getting quite a bit of a dot pattern. I try to go really tight with it. It is going to start to skip on me a little bit. So I'm going to thin that out uh, about right in half. I like to uh, pinch the tip and allow the airflow to sort of mix back into the cup and that kind of mixes the paint for me, bubbles it all up in there. Sometimes it takes a while for the paint to fully mix. Now I can get some of these finer lines with a little less skipping. And if you don't know what skipping is guys, it's just when your line starts to bounce a little bit. Instead of being nice and full, you get some thick thin, thick thins, maybe some areas where it doesn't even give any paint. That is what is considered skipping. 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 Less skipping. <laughs> Alright guys. Now, let's do the same thing. Let's try fade. Ooh. Well that's blending quite a bit nicer. Quite a bit. So you see the dot pattern? Less of a dot pattern. More of a dot pattern. Nah, you get the gist. Alright guys. So play around. Um, I don't know why this is just the shape I kind of tend to do. Or I'll do circles. When I'm trying to mess with my paint to see if it's spraying out to the consistency I want. Um, sometimes I'll do uh, big spots where I'm starting. I just kind of blend it out just to see how it's blending from the center out. Um, good little tricks to practice if you want to start doing lines back and forth, up and down, whatever is comfortable for you guys. I recommend doing a bunch of that. I mean, it's just going to get your muscle memory. It's only going to fine tune you. Understand how your paint flows through the brush. Um, but I know a lot of you guys are possibly past that stage. So I know you want practice, you want to get that muscle memory. Okay, so we're going to get into some more techniques here. Um, this is where the pen and the ruler are going to come into play. Alright guys, and uh, I'm not measuring anything out here. Okay, I'm just going to go with the width of the ruler. Over, width of the ruler, over, alright. And uh, top and bottom, side to side. I'll uh, time lapse this. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> Dr. Seuss. I love Dr. Seuss. Alright guys, simple grid pattern. And the only reason why we're doing this is this is going to give you the muscle memory and this is going to allow you to aim your airbrush. Alright guys, so we got our airbrush, we got our paint flowing nicely. What I want you to do is slap some spots on this bad boy. Big spots, little spots, medium spots, give some spots to this dude. So what I want you to do is just sort of aim for the crosshair. Big to little, little to big, yeah, let's go big to little. So I'm going to go about, yeah, three inches. All right, guys. 
Bracing my hand with my other hand. Full air. And slowly building it up. Slowly building it up. So I'm going to call that, I don't know, 100%. Alright, now we're going to do it a little bit less. A little bit less. And when I say less, I want to kind of keep the same size, just less paint. I know my pen shredded my grid here. Gotta love technology. Alright guys, practice that a few times. Kind of go what I guess would be 100%, get that fairly dark. And then start gradually using less and less paint until it's just a... Uh... Alright guys, so big dot. Medium dot. Now I'm about an inch and a half away, guys. About 100%. A little less. A little less. Always keeping the trigger down, the air on full, and just controlling how much paint we apply. Alright, guys. I want to see pages, pages of big dots, pages of medium dots. I know a lot of your dots are going to end up over here and over there, but this is how we work guys, this is how we learn. We aim for a goal, and once we reach that goal, we aim for another goal, and we keep aiming, and we never lose sight, and we never lose track. Alright guys, practice makes perfect. So big dot, medium dot. Now I am going to be about, man, a centimeter, okay? And now at this point, because it's very easy to start having your brush wibble wobble on you. So at this point, I'm going to be having my knuckle on my piece of paper. And I'll be holding my hand right here. Centimeter away. Little dot. And I'm barely giving any paint whatsoever, guys. But this is going to train you to understand where your paint is going to come out of your needle. So this is going to train you, guys. About a centimeter away. Brace yourself. A little dot. A little dot. A little dot. All right, guys, keep her going. I want to see pages. My dot is starting to turn into a bit of an oval, so I know I got some paint that's starting to build up on the tip. And this is where I just clean it with the tips of my fingers, guys. Nothing crazy. Pages! Pages, guys! Don't stop at one, alright? Even if you get it good the first time, consider it a fluke, alright? Keep going, keep going, dude. The only way you're going to get that muscle memory is to keep training yourself to put those dots exactly where you want them, alright, guys? Um, shoot, I shouldn't have used the whole page. <laughs> alright, I'm going to, uh, ah! Forget it. I'll grid out another page, guys. We'll come back. Alright, guys. Now's where the little stencil business card comes in handy. Comes in play. Okay. So, we're going to work on some fades. Alright, guys. Fading, blending, same sort of thing. So, just rest her up against your line. And start hitting her heavy. Maybe we'll just do one square at a time. Maybe, no, you know what? Let's do two squares at a time, guys. I don't want to make this too difficult. Two squares at a time. Blender halfway. All right, two squares at a time. Blender halfway. And do gradients, guys. Maybe this one you only blend 
a quarter of the way. Maybe this one you blend three quarters of the way. I think you, I think you feel what I'm putting down. Oh, ah, look at that. Going too fast, too much paint. My paint's nice and dry over here because I'm giving enough time to dry before I move on. However, the stencil never had enough time to dry. So that actually got to be so wet where it dripped off my stencil and down onto my piece. Yep, keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. But what was this? Was this a mistake? No, no, no. This was a lesson for you and me both. All right guys, work on different types of gradients, different types of fades. You know, if you wanna start doing corner fades, bring her down, maybe bring her up. We'll work on a couple different kinds, okay guys? Don't set yourself up with just the one and think you're done, all right? Play around. This is the cool thing about having a whole pad. Nothing says you need to stop on page seven, guys. Keep her going. Keep that drive alive. Drying off my stencil? What did we learn? <laughs> Smarter, not harder, guys. And maybe you want to start playing with uh, bringing it in. Now we start to get into the sort of cylinder type looks, guys, when you uh, bring your fade from one side. Ah, I'm out of paint. Intermission. And we're back like we never left. All right, guys. So again, as I was saying, cylinders, where you bring in two fades from two edges is Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, guys. Um, drop shadows, you wanna start messing around with some drop shadows too, guys? Pick a corner, all right? So uh, line that up against the corner. Pick a light source, remember I like to put little arrows where my light would be coming from. And if my light's coming from this direction, my shadow for this square would be Something like that. If my arrows are coming from this direction, well, my shadow would be something like. Hope my wrist ain't in the way there. Yup, yeah, it is. Alright, guys, if my arrow's coming straight on down, straight on down, then well, my shadow. The would wrist be isn't the problem like... anymore. It's the whole arm. <laughs> All right, and if you want to give it just a little bit of a three dimension, hit that whole area. Let's bring that square into the foreground and bring everything else in the background. I'm not giving it too much paint, but I'm giving the whole surface a bit of paint. Boom, she's floating. Play with it, dude. All right, this is your time to have some fun. Nothing is right, nothing is wrong, guys. You are learning. So play. Play, learn, have fun. Alright. Pages! Pages, guys! Alright, guys, there you have it. Alright? You have now been... Double challenge, all right? I've uh, given you some tips, some tasks, some techniques that you can now take with you, spend the next couple weeks while I get back to work and start making some real money. Spend the next couple weeks practicing honing your skill, guys. Ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Put those hours in. Let me know your progress, guys. I love to hear the feedback. Hit me up in the comments. Questions, you got questions? Hit me up in the comments. If you think you can add to this amazing channel, hit me up in the comments. If you think I suck, 
Hit me up in the comments, guys. A thumb down does nothing, right? It's like, well, okay, what didn't he like? Give me some constructive criticism. Make me better while I make you better. I don't shun it down, guys. You can't hurt me. You can't phase me. Oh, I'm invisible. Invincible. I'm invincible. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time, beginners. I don't know. Can I still call you a beginner? Boot camp. All right, you are recruit. All right, lace up those boots. Keep those trigger fingers nimble. And until next time, guys, cheers. <laughs> and as you grow, so too does the Bloodshot Army. Tell the world that we are here to make this place a little more colorful. And as always, guys, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. What do you think, Scully? Did we ever solve the case of the black sketch pad? I don't know. There were some suggestions. Some of them were getting a little crazy. Some of them were you, Scully. Literally. <laughs> All right, guys. I know there was a few suggestions, but uh, I need more. I need more feedback. What do we paint on the cover of this book? What do we do? Um, when I say we, I want whatever we paint on the cover of this to be a beginner's tutorial, guys. So, if I'm painting this, you're painting it with me, alright? You don't get off scot-free, do they? No, no, they don't get off scot-free. Alright, guys, feedback, comment, let me know. What do you want to paint on the cover of your airbrushing journal? Hit me up. Cheers.